Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Hi, everyone, and welcome to your second installment of the Real Film Nerds this week. With me, as always, my brother from another mother, as much as everyone uses that frickin' line, Mysterious Mike. Man, it's a cliche line, but it's still good. It still works. It's okay. it, it's true, man. I and I like your mom about as much as I like my mom. So, yeah. See, it's even more personal. See, it's not quite a cliche. I mean, how many times have you, has your mom ever called you? Oh no, not your mom. My mom ever called you to talk? Uh, no, not. Uh. Never, I guess. No. See, your mom will call and talk to me sometimes. Never. Mostly mostly about you and your upcoming nuptials. Ah, uh, yes, yes. I I I am mysterious Mike is is uh getting married. So usually about that, or she'll call and say, you know, she's come up to stay at my house, things like that. So it's nice. I like I like your mom and dad. They're good people. They're good people. I always try and stop by and say hello when I'm back home for things. So, okay. So, with that, Matt, what are we reviewing? So, Mike, I was going to say, tag your it. That's ah. what we're reviewing. That's what we're reviewing this week. Tag. Yeah. All so, right. my, well, shit. See, we keep stepping on each other because we stupid Skype is too slow. Well, we're, All right. we're, we're we're not sure which which one is is it. That's the problem, Matt. Like, are, am I it? Are you it? Tag your it, Mike. Give us the rundown on the movie tag. All right. So, tag is about a small group of former classmates organizing an elaborate annual game of tag that requires some travel all over the country. And uh, this is uh, starring uh, Jeremy Reiner, Ed Helms, Jake Johnson, John Hamm, and uh, Isla Fisher, Hannibal Burris. Hannibal Burris. Burris. Oh, man. Sorry. Uh, and then Leslie Bibb. There, I mean, there's quite a few characters in this movie, but... Uh, yeah, Rashida Jones. She's another big one. Oh yeah, Rashida Jones. Sorry. Yeah. And then, I, I uh, like how I like how you said uh, Jeremy Reiner instead of Jeremy Renner. Oh yeah, sorry, Renner. <laughs> Dude, I'm just tearing you apart on this one. I'm sorry. All right. So directing <laughs> you is Jeff Tomsek. Tomsek. Uh, writers are Rob McKittrick, Mark Stellan. And Russell Adams oh, was uh, the original writer of It Takes Planning Caution to Avoid Being Beat, which was the original Wall Street Journal article uh, exposing this uh, real tag that had taken place over, I think, 30 years. Um, so uh, this movie was really fun. I enjoyed this movie. You know, quite a bit. It's 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 all about just playing tag and and these uh, adults who didn't want to grow old. They said growing like they used some quote from was it Washington meant that was like growing old is when you stop playing games or something. And they never wanted to grow old, so they continued to play games. Yeah, I think they said first it was Franklin, and then they said it was like Lincoln, and they said it, they they've used a couple historical figures to say that quote. But yeah, yeah. So this was a fun movie, though. It was like this is the movie that uh, comes out in the summer, and there's all these blockbusters. There's Jurassic World. There's Incredibles. Um, you know, there's all these other movies, and this movie might get left behind. But we wanted to highlight it because, you know, it was actually pretty fun and uh, it, it was entertaining. And even Matt was saying that he thought it was just going to be a bunch of dick jokes. And uh, actually, it wasn't. It was, it was a decent movie. 
Yeah, I was afraid it was going to be like a buddy film, like Hangover, Hangover 2, Hangover 3, something like that, where it was going to be just slapsticky, uh, funny dick jokes, and it wasn't. It, I was surprised. It was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I personally really enjoyed this movie. It could be that uh, I was getting a little sentimental over it, I guess you would say, especially with our little group of friends that we had which really doesn't exist anymore, and that kind of pulls at me. You know, uh, I guess it took me, not to get uh, emotional about it, but I guess it took me to a place where it's like, you know, I I miss having, you know, guy friends around that I go and hang out with and talk to and stuff. I, I have a fair share of friends here in Prescott. You know, most of you listen to this podcast. But, uh, you know, like... They don't want to go see certain movies with me if they want to see a movie at all, or they don't give a shit about Star Wars or video games are the last thing on their mind. They're too busy having kids or retiring or whatever. And it's just, this seemed like a genuine group of guys that, you know, they had this one thing in common. They all had their separate lives, but still they would hang it up and go do stuff. And I feel, you know, I related to my life and how I don't really have that anymore so well uh that sounds very depressing man but the uh i I didn't mean it to come off as depressing i mean you know you're my best friend in the world but you live on the other side of the country so yeah i guess that's true um but we do try and get together every once in a while but not like in this movie in this movie they dedicate the month of may to playing tag and these guys work on elaborate plots to figure out how to pop out at each other in different situations wherever they are. It doesn't matter. And, and it seems like all of them do live in different parts of the country. I think every one of these was there's like there's five five main characters, right? Uh, yeah, it's five or six. It, it depends if you count. Um, oh, what's the character's name? Ed Helm's character, uh, Hogan. Or Hoagie. Uh, if you count his wife as a main character, because she was oh, yeah. uh, as much as everyone else. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's like six main characters, right? But they live in five different places, because Ed Helms, uh, Hoagie's character's wife lives with him, so she's in the same place. But Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would consider her a main character, because she's pretty much there from the start, even though she's not involved in the game of tag, because they came up with the game before uh, they were mature and liked girls, and so there was a strict no-girl clause in their game. Yes, yes, I did enjoy how they had, like, um, there's a couple times in the movie where they they talk about amendments, and they can change the rules of the game if everybody agrees to sign on it. Yeah, and and that's what's cool, too, is they have to sign on it. Yeah, so that was kind of fun. It's, it's, uh... This was just a really fun movie. This this was, uh, you know, the humor is, uh, you, you know, you can tell that these people have um, grown up with each other because it's, it's like nothing has changed all these years. And what I can say from my experiences with meeting people and, and hanging out with uh, some of my friends that I haven't seen in five or six years, it's just like it was the day that the last time I saw them, it's like nothing changed. I don't know. It's weird. Um, I don't know, Matt. Have you experienced that in your life where you see somebody you haven't seen in a long time and it's just like, just, just like it was? No. Typically, um, other than you, but I mean, we talk on the phone or on Skype or whatever all the time. But I mean, other than you, it doesn't really feel that way when I run across people, you know. I don't know. It, it's oh, people change. Right. People change. You know, they have kids. They have jobs. They become more adult. They uh, whatever. It's people change, especially at you know our point in time in lives. You know, our what mid thirties. Uh, people have changed a lot by the time they get to this. If I haven't seen someone like I don't know, if I ran across Wyatt today, I'm sure it would be completely different than the last time I saw him. I don't know, maybe it wouldn't, but I, I think it would be completely different. I'm sure – I haven't talked to him in forever. I miss that dude. But I'm sure he probably has one or two kids and a wife and 
everything yeah, else, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, okay, all right. Well, for, for, for me, um, you know, I just, I just had some friends visit in, uh, my undisclosed location, and, uh, I hadn't seen them in seriously four to five years, and it was like nothing changed. They're, they're still, uh, they were still pretty awesome, and, uh, you know, they have a couple kids and stuff, but, it, you know, it was still fine. It was, it was them. Um, well, Mike, we can, we can let it out where you live. You live in Intercourse, Pennsylvania. Oh, uh, well, you know, I didn't want it. It's on your, anybody. it's, it's on our newly recently updated bio page with two amazing pictures of us. Oh yes, yes, I did see my picture. It's it's a good one. It's from the archives. I really liked it. it. Has me doing getting ready for some scuba diving. Everyone should check it out. Yep, and that's at realfilmnerds.com slash hosts. And that's R E E L. So go check it out. Have yourself a good little laugh. Uh my good buddy. Uh, Steve down in Phoenix, who I used to work with at the Courier for many, many years, uh, did me a solid and wrote the biographies for both of us. And Steve, for those of you who do not know him, is a very, very, very talented writer, especially when it comes to comedy writing, which is interesting because Steve is most known for his sports writing. Huh. Well, sports and comedy, it's the same, right? Definitely. Tackling someone and statistics is the exact same thing as telling a dick joke. <laughs> well, I think it depends on which tackler, you know? They're probably playing with their dick a little too much. It depends if they got a cup or not. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, speaking of football, oh, did I tell you what happened to me last night at our last game? No, tell him, tell him, tell us. Oh, dude. So those of you who do not know, I am the photographer for the Arizona Rattlers in Phoenix, and we are in the one and only playoff game that the IFL has. Well, not one and only game. It's one level of playoff games because there's only six teams in the league. But they went into overtime playing Sioux Falls, who we beat last year for the championship in Sioux Falls. And Sioux Falls, in, South Dakota, right? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. And so they were doing a toy, uh, toy a coin cost, cost. Uh, a coin toss? <laughs> they do a coin toss at the end of of the regulation play if you go into overtime to determine who goes first because in the IFL, each team gets one possession and the team that scores and, you know, not scores first, but scores wins, basically. And so if both teams score and both teams make the extra point, then they do another one and so on and so forth. I've only been around for them to do one in all the games I've photographed so far. So I was up photographing the coin toss because it's a big deal, you know, and everything. Well, they the they got the one umpire, referee, head umpire guy, whatever, that does not know how to flip a damn coin. And he flipped the coin and threw it halfway across the freaking field and it hit me and on my foot. Oh, my gosh. Did you take and, a picture of it, dude? You had to. Uh, no, well, I was taking a picture as they were flipping it and everything, and everybody's like, in one of the shots, like, everyone's, like, looking at me, but um, they flipped the coin and it hit my foot, and all the guys were like, oh, oh, they gotta reflip it, and I was like, whatever, I don't care, I was like, it just touched me, it didn't flip or anything, and if you look at my pictures, when he's flipping the coin, the coin didn't even flip, he just, like, tossed the fucking thing, so <sighs> Sioux Falls got the... Sioux Falls got the coin flip, and they deferred to air, to us to have the first possession. Make the long story short, um, we scored our touchdown, missed our extra point. They actually blocked our extra point. And then Sioux Falls went literally the first play. The quarterback threw it and made a touchdown. The dude was wide open, and they made their extra point. So we lost. Oh, man. And the other, uh, not to get 
because there's a lot of uh, superstition in sports, but not to get even more superstitious, other than the coin hitting me, was um, on Tuesday, I got a flat tire. The last time I got a flat tire, the Rattlers lost. <laughs> I got a flat tire after the game, driving home on I-17. I picked up a nail doing 80 miles an hour in my brand new tire and destroyed my brand new tire. Nice. Nice. Jesus, what is going on at your house? <laughs> Sorry, uh, ice machine. Um, <laughs> it sounded like you were beating someone. So, so, so Matt, to get back on to tag, uh, what, what would you say, wasn't there some kind of injury on one of the characters in the set that caused some, some oh, yeah. weirdness? Well, Jeremy Renner, in one of the scenes, was doing his own stunts and broke not one, but two of his arms. Oh, man. So what did he end up doing? Well, for that particular scene, now, I thought it was throughout the entire movie, but I was wrong. For that particular scene in the movie, they reshot it with him having green screen casts on, and they CGI'd in his arms. Man, that must have been costly. I didn't even notice, personally. And I was specifically trying to look throughout the entire movie to see when... Yeah, yeah. Jesus, I dude. To look. That is so loud. <laughs> Sorry, man. It's okay. All right, go ahead. Um, yeah, I was I was trying to look as well. I didn't, I didn't see the CGI stuff at all, like, because I knew that it happened, but I was trying to find it, because I know uh, in um, the place that I live, I work with some people that are uh, Intercourse, CGI. Pennsylvania? Yeah, in, in Intercourse, I, I work uh, with some CGI people, and they can spot anything in any movie, and I feel bad when I can't spot it, because yeah. it's it's not necessarily what I am trained to do, but I would like to be able to to see it. And uh, yeah, I think I failed. I'm maybe failure. you should go. Maybe you should go to the movies with them. No. Well, I mean, it's not like we would talk during the movie, so it wouldn't be until afterwards they would. Be right. Like, but they could at least point it out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, they're. They're always looking at all kinds of. Um, they're looking at it at, from a technical sp- perspective on how uh, the effects are rendered and all kinds of stuff. So sometimes I found out some stuff. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, well, I, being a visual person, I thought for sure I would have picked up where it was, but I didn't pick it up at all. Well, so I guess it was a good job. All now, right, so. Go ahead, Mike. So, 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 Matt, what did you think of... Uh, I know you, you like the movie, but like, uh, there, there's this point where maybe the joke goes too far. And I was like, wow. I, I wasn't sure what to believe or not. And it was, it was pretty serious. But then kind of the way that the rest of the movie goes... It's still kind of serious. What what did, what did you think about like the last act? I guess? Dude, just spoil the hell out of it. We spoil those movies all the time, anyways. Oh, are you talking? Are you talking about the miscarriage thing? Yes, the miscarriage thing. Okay. Yeah. No. Well, I I thought it was like legit. I didn't think that it was uh, Jeremy Renner and his whoever was playing his wife. I don't. Oh, hold on. Stand I don't by, remember. Stand by. Stand by. Uh, Leslie Bibb and Susan Rollins. Okay. So, yeah. I didn't think they actually got her in on it, which that was pretty funny. I, I thought it was funny, but yeah, it continues that serious tone till the end of the movie because then later on you find out at the end one of the main characters is truly sick and everything, and then it gets kind of depressing, so... Yeah, but does he really... Is he really sick? Matt, that was the one thing I was confused about, because... It- a hundred percent sure. At the end of the movie, oh, dude, I think so. I think so for sure. 
All right, because like, because is this he, just an elaborate gag, or is he really like? I know there was a couple things in the movie there. Like, I can't believe he did this in his condition. You're like, what condition? Well, but I, as you see, he clearly thought about it and figured out a way to get everyone into it really bad because. He even tells the lie that Jeremy Renner, who has never been tagged in these 30 years, which I never would believe, um, says he's going to retire a champion. And you find out that Jeremy Renner never said any of that at the end of the film. Yeah, that was just a way to get everybody else to, like, I feel like they were maybe getting to a point uh, in their tag history where a lot of people were like maybe trying to get out of going to tag like you know it's kind of getting old man i don't want to do it but then they're like hey what's his face is quitting it's his last season or whatever and like oh all right well now i gotta do it yeah uh, and and the reason why he did that is because he wanted to have that last round of tag with everybody involved before he died yeah, no, no. I, so I think that was 100% legit. I don't think he was faking that at all. Now, Matt, I was going to ask you, since, since we've already, you know, blown the major ending points. The, not the not the 100% ending, but yeah, pretty bad. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, when it ends, they show the real guys who, who, who do this or did this. Um, do you think the movie was based on it at all besides the concept or do you think it was just they liked the idea because I feel like they liked the idea and they took the idea of some some adults playing tag for many years and they just kind of construed different situations but do you think they did take any of the stuff that those guys had originally done now I know they did show just a couple clips of them like popping out at the guys but what I think, think the the main storyline was made up, in my opinion. The different um, gags that they play on each other, like tagging them at funerals and weddings and in airports and the old lady, you know, when Ed Helms dresses up as an old lady and he's trying to tag Jeremy Renner in a mall. I mean, you see a lot of those in the end clips. And so I think a lot of the tagging gags were legitimate from the guys that actually played the game, except for the really hardcore one. The really hardcore one where Jeremy Renner lures them into the forest on the golf carts oh, yeah, and is yeah. usually is literally using... Um, like decoys? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, he's using the decoys, then he's also... Um, oh, what is that chemical that they causes you to pass out? Chloroform. I'm forgetting. Chloroform. They're using chloroform on... On them, I think that was that gag was completely made up. For the for the most part, I think a lot of the ones that they did were at least real in a certain level. Okay, yeah, yeah, like because when I when I when it kind of ends and you kind of see like the real guys and stuff, you're like, I yeah, don't think I don't think they did some of the stuff quite the way that they showed it. But I think the point of the movie was there was a bunch of guys. Who grew up together and wanted to not be old, and they wanted to continue to play games, and they have. I think and I also think a lot of the characters were also made up. I don't think uh, the characters themselves were based on real life people either. Yeah, no, no, I don't think so. Like they had that bartender that she just gave so much shit. Who wanted to play? Who wanted to be a part of it? Oh, it was so funny. Yeah, that was they, funny. They kept <laughs> like. Yeah. Who was your favorite character out of the whole film? Hmm. Who was my favorite character? Um, I don't know. I think I liked Hoagie. Yeah? I think, I think, Ed Helms? Yeah, I think I liked Ed Helms' character. I thought Jake Johnson's uh, the, the chili character, um, I think he was smoking weed just too much. Like, Jesus. Like, the whole movie, he has, like, a joint in his mouth. Well, and that's the gag. That's one of the gags. He's the he's the stoner that moved to Colorado. <laughs> you know? I mean, that was funny. But Yeah, but, I mean, it, I mean it's... Wow. Um, uh, you know, 
know, but I, you know, I like uh, Mad Men. You know, John 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 Hams. He, yeah, he's, he's he's good, but I mean, he played kind of the Mad Men guy. He was the corporate executive guy. And you're like, well, kind of typecast, but um. Well, Ed, I liked Ed, Ed Helms was a dentist, right? Just like he was in in um, Orthodontist. Orthodontist, but isn't that his same character that he played in? Um, oh. The Hangover. Yeah, the Hangover. Kinda, series. kinda. He was a dentist in uh, the Hangover, but he was an orthodontist in this one. So similar, that's for sure. I I like how all of them melded together really well. I thought they all played off of each other really well. But I have two favorite characters that I really liked. I really liked Hannibal Burris's character. To me, he was like the narrator of like the audience. Like he would say the stuff that you're thinking in your head, you know? <laughs> and I just love that about Hannibal Burris. That character was just fantastic. Thanks. And then the other character I really liked <laughs> was Isla Fisher's uh Anna Malloy, uh uh Hoagie's uh wife. Oh, I, yeah. I I thought she just killed it. She she tapped into that crazy gene she had in Wedding Crashers. Uh, yeah, and I was gonna say she she seemed like she was kind of a Wedding Crashers esque character again, but she was yeah good. yeah that craziness that she had was just hilarious. I just loved it because she kept going too far and it. It didn't stop throughout the whole thing. Like, when she's finally, like, getting to tag people and stuff at the end, like, she's tackling people and, like, taking them to the ground and, like, beating them and stuff. It was uh, it was so good. I thought she just killed it. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that character. Yeah. All right. I, I could see that. that would, yeah. Good character. All right. Speaking of characters, and I know this is another freaking easy one, but Mike... How does Tag relate to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? I'm glad you asked. Um, <laughs> I love that's the line you use every single time. That's so great. <laughs> I'm going to get – when I when we get T-shirts made, if we ever get T-shirts made, I'm going to make that one of our slogans. <laughs> well, Matt, I'm glad you asked. It's going to be underneath our little logo. Well, um, Jeremy Renner, who is in this as uh, Jerry Pierce, the guy who can't be tagged. He's also Hawkeye in the Avengers series of Marvel Cinematic Universe. What? No way! Yes. Yes way. Now, is there any other person, Matt, that you know of? I don't... I didn't look, you know, so I'm pretty lazy when I look at these. And once yeah, you I just find go with the, the easiest one. <laughs> once I find the first person, I stop. But I wonder, is there any other person... Well, I think we need to just start clicking on names. Okay. But, um, I don't know. There's no one else that really is predominant to me that's popping into my head that's from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, it's probably, like, someone random. Like, maybe Jake Johnson was a background character. Yeah. He you might know? have been. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway. This one was another easy one, and I appreciate these easy ones because there's quite a few hard ones, and I know every time we watch some of these independent movies, I'll be, I'm going to be doing Oh, I, God damn it. How did I not realize that one? And I just rewatched this movie the other day. Hannibal Burris is in Spider-Man Homecoming. Oh, awesome. He's the uh, coach that's in charge of the detention. Oh, yeah. Coach Wilson. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, Dude, see, I told suck. you I thought it was. I told you I thought it was Hannibal Burris. Yeah, you you suck, man. Come on. 
Well, I'm sorry, Mike. I'm sorry. When I grow up, someday I'll be like you. Yeah. And get married and breed and have lots of children and have a good life. But right now, that's not happening. So, sorry. Well, all right. Yeah, I'll I'll take that excuse for now. Fine. All right, so, Mike, I love Tag. I think you should go see it. I really enjoyed it. Um, if you don't see it in the theaters, that's fine. It's not one of these movies you absolutely have to see in the theaters. Because um, there's not, you know, a lot of special effects. There's not a lot of really poignant sounds, nothing like that. But I definitely think if you want a nice, fun, feel-good, buddy comedy movie, definitely go see Tag. Uh, I'm tempted to go see it for my second time just because I really enjoyed it that much. It took me to a really nice place that I wish still existed in my life, I guess is a good way to put it. All right. Um, So I like this movie, but I don't think I liked it as much as Matt. But, uh, you know, I'm I'm going to give this movie a pretty good rating. Um, Well, what is it, Mike, since I didn't do mine yet? I would uh, love to hear yours first. All right, so I'm I'm going to give this movie three reels because I I think people should see this, but I I'm I'm with you on you don't need to necessarily see this at the theater, um, especially with the prices and stuff. So, but if now, it, you know, now how is how is three a good rating? Three just means average. Yeah, three it's average, man. What, what, Matt, what are you going to give this movie? Well, as I said, I really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was great. And it could just be that I'm sentimental and it took me to a really nice, comfortable spot, as I've said a couple times now. But I give Tag a four out of five reels. Oh, man. We we just do not agree a lot. But uh, that's okay. Um, oh, I, really, I really liked it. I really did. And again, it just might... It just is probably because the way it made me feel, but that's what movies are supposed to do. A good movie is supposed to make you feel something. And it was funny, and it was fun, and it was sentimental, and it was emotional at times. You know, I liked it. I really did. Well, that's good, man. So, do we have anything on tap for next week? Are we going to tease anything? uh if I am not mistaken, next week is a movie that I am really, really looking forward to. Um, let me double check and make sure it's next week and it didn't get pushed. Um, oh, yeah. I believe I, Sicario, I Sicario yeah. Day of the Soldado yeah. is next coming out next week. Um, it says, according to IMDb, as of right now, it's supposed to be coming out on Friday, June 29th. All right, man. So, are so we going to do a legacy cast on on the Thursday? Are we? What do you think, Mike? Do you want to do a legacy cast next week? Uh, we do have quite a few requests on our legacy cast, and the next one that we have in line, which is a request, is a fun one. Um, unless you have another movie you'd like to see in theaters, I think do I you- think we could do a legacy cast. Um, it looks like there's not too much coming out, so I'm I'm good with the legacy cast. What's the next well, one we have? Well, do you do you know of anything? Uh, let me look at the new movies coming out. But you, do you know of anything that's coming up that you really want to see? No, um, I, ju- I just looked at everything that's on IMDb, and like the next movie I'm going to see is The Purge, probably the yes. first Purge on July 4th. Oh, dude, I am looking forward to that. I think that'll be really good. Yeah. But yeah, so July that you know that week we might not be able to do a legacy cast, so we probably should do one this week. Okay. Because uh you know what else comes out that week, right? The July 4th weekend? Uh is that Ant-Man and and Ant-Man and the Wasp comes yeah, out that week. Yes, sir. Yes. Yep. So yeah, I think we're going to have to do a legacy cast. We're going to put our foot down right now and we're going to do a legacy cast. All right. Well, then let's do our legacy cast next week, which will probably be Thursday. It might be Tuesday. I'm not sure. We will discuss that later. But it's a a near and dear film to my heart, Spaceballs. Oh, yeah. Let's do Spaceballs. That sounds great. Requested by my buddy, co-worker, friend, 
Mr. Derek Nanke. Yeah, that's a great movie. Uh, I can't wait to talk about it. So, all right, Mike. So on that note, you got anything else you want to add? No news, no, you know, movie pass news, AMC news, anything? No, no. I I think we covered a lot of that stuff uh, in the last podcast, but I'll, I'll be keeping my ear out for any kind of new media kind of weird things. Who knows what's going to happen? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I think that's a good thing is when there is some big time news in the movie world, it might be something to talk about. Now, I'm not talking, uh, you know, someone getting pregnant or who's dating who. I don't really give a shit about that. But news that genuinely affects the movie industry, I think, is a good thing to bring up every now and then when we need to, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I, like I said in our last podcast, I would... I really enjoy going to the theater, and I hope that we don't keep moving to a place where we're not going to the theaters. I even had a coworker ask me, he's like, when do you think they're going to start releasing the movies online the same day they come out in the theaters and you just pay a huge price? I was like, I hope never, man. Yeah, I think think if that ever happens, that's going to be a sad day. I can see it happening. Doesn't mean I want it to happen because it's just not the same thing as going and sitting in a giant screen with a whole bunch of people. You don't get that community. And we've already lost so much community in this world and society today. It, not having movies will just do that even more. Yeah, I just like going to the experience. I like, um, I like the complete immersion living in that, that moment, like, when you're at home, there can be a lot of distractions, but when you're in the theater, I mean, there still can be a lot of distractions, but hopefully there's not as many, and you can just watch the movie. You don't have control over it, so you have to watch the whole thing. I like that. So Yeah, and you can't stop and rewind it. Yeah. You, you're not going to be looking at your phone, you know, or you shouldn't be looking at your phone. Yeah, you shouldn't be, but uh, uh, yeah. I, I mean, now... Nowadays, how many times are people – I mean, people are always looking at their phones. I'm as guilty as the next person. You yeah. know, you can't sit down and have a meal without looking at your phone. I mean, we're all so connected, but we're not connected. I mean, we can get going on this big time because it's yeah. tech and we're both so big into tech. Yeah, but, screen slavers. We're all right. screen slavers. Right. We're we're all connected more – than we ever have been, but we're also the least connected more than we ever have been, too. Yes. So, it's yes, quite a dichotomy. Yeah, it is. It's a great, yeah, that's a great, uh, great word for it, dichotomy. Yep. So, on that note, anything else you want to add there, Michael? Uh, no, I enjoyed watching this movie. This is a fun movie that if you can squeeze it in in between your blockbuster movies go for it but uh if you can't if you see it on on video or red box or you know wherever you get your movies you know it's it's a good movie to watch yeah give it a watch it's enjoyable for sure well you know i think we should end it end it there and i definitely think we should say it even though it is our catch line but make sure and go out and watch a movie in a theater that's what we're all about. So go see a movie. Yes, I agree. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now, go out and catch a movie.